everybody! Today, Rado runs through Merchants of Magic, a set of watch tale. But before we begin, please turn on your subtitles to the Klingon channel so that when I have an oops moment, you'll know about it. Hey everybody, Kimberly here with Merchants of Magic, a set of watch tale. This is a roll and write game that takes about 45 minutes and plays 1 to 8. And the cool thing about this is play is nearly simultaneous, so those rounds go by really fast. It takes about 45 minutes to play this game. I've got this set up for two players and those two adventurers, me, and I've got Lewis over here. So we have a shop. We are merchants, and we are going to be sponsoring adventurers, filling orders, and essentially investing and building up our store's wares. Because the adventurers seem to have all the fun. This time, it's all about you, the merchant. So let's take a look at these uh, player sheets here. This is a roll and write. I've got my sheet here. My name, or my shop name, is Emilio's Excellent Equipment. I love that anaphora there, the E-E-E. -E -E. And uh, Emilio is my handle when I play a lot of video games. So um, that is my shop. And over here, I got Lou's Goods. Lou's Goods, that's his shop. This is Lewis over here. Now, players in a two-player game have four of these different items that have a variety of keywords that are in front of them during this particular round. Ten rounds in the game, but they will shift. But these are the cards that are available for Lewis right now. These are the cards that are available to me. Each of us gets a sponsored adventurer that really wants a specific kind of equipment um, with, again, enchantments, um, accessories, weapons, armor, and it's listed right here. I'll show you my cleric because this is actually going to um, definitely influence the choices I make on that very first turn because I like the keyword divine. I want to make this cleric a divine backpack, a divine sword, and a divine find shield and if I can I will receive six points at the end of the game but along the way I will get some cool stuff every time I accomplish one of those orders for my super cool cleric I'm going to receive what's listed here so it's right there on your sheet I love it so here we go I am gonna jump right into it I'm gonna take these dice now I will say this is my little teeny tiny tray and I wanted to make sure the dice just don't go all over the place. And so this tray does not come with the game, uh, but it's going to sit right there. It's the perfect size. I mean, you can see just how small of a space. This is not a table hog, which I love, that it's just so compact and so clear. So I'm going to take these polyhedral dice. I've got a D6, a D8, a D10, and a D12, and they are also color-coded. Uh, but I like that they're also just the different sizes, and you have great iconography on your sheet. This is called the resource phase. Start of round one, we are going to roll the dice. Okay, I almost made it. I'm gonna put that one right in there. It actually landed on the side. <laughs> I swear I practiced and it, the dice went in the, in the dice tray. Uh, so here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna take my pen and I'm going to write in this very first column round one results based on the die. So we got a D6, we got a six. Then we got the D8 is a 1, D10, we got 7 result, and then we got a 12. And so simultaneously, Lewis is going to be doing the exact same thing. He wrote 6, 1, 7, and then 12. So now here is where the simultaneous play comes in. So this is the crafting and the research phase, and you're going to notice that your board is divided into two columns. Essentially, you've got this dotted line down the center. Over here is crafting, where you're going to use steel, wood, and leather to create or to manufacture these accessories, which are those classic backpacks and grimoires and spears and warhammers, bracers, shields, and greaves. You've got all this stuff. This is going to be like those weapons, those um, armor uh, uh, devices that you've that can sell out to all these different adventurers. On this side, you've got your research. This is your elemental, arcane, and wild. You've got enchantments with two sections. These are gonna be the keywords, I want divine. So that's definitely where I'm probably gonna find a place to put one of my dice. Um, over here, Lewis wants to um, serve this warrior of the dwarves. His keyword is dwarves. So he's probably going to want to invest in Dwarves of the Dwarves keyword, which is going to help his adventurer 
but also probably meet some of these general order uh, demands. We've got a shocking scroll helmet of the dwarves. That's probably of interest to Lewis. Fiery greaves of the orc, everlasting grimoire, spear of the orcs, fiery plate armor, shield of the orcs, divine sword of the dwarves. I like divine and maybe I'll get a chance to actually uh, create that. That's a really nice super mega sword. <laughs> It's really nice and fancy. It has uh, three keywords, essentially, uh, as opposed to just two keywords. You'll notice with some of those that have just one color on the side. Okay, the other thing is charms. Charms are just going to give you bonus, uh, either potions or victory points at the end of the game. Players now are going to take two of these dice results. I'm going to look out here and say, I want to take this result and that result. That's fine. Lewis looks out here and says he could take the same result, he could take any combination, he gets to select two as well. It could be the same, it could be different. These are the collective dice, they don't change, those are available to all players. And you're going to look down here. Now if you want to do materials, you can only buy a material and color in a circle or check it off if it matches the die on the column that you're checking off. So if I wanted to use this six, I could only check off something under steel, wood, and leather because sixes on the D6 right here only apply to crafting. And you'll see here I've got um, the uh, other dice available. Only one right here on elemental goes to that D8. Then you've got the 10 and the 12 are more of the research. Now, the interesting thing is that this has to be um, equal to or higher than on the crafting side and your die result has to be equal to or lower than on the research side. So I'm picking two dice. Now I really like that 12 because I, well maybe, do I like the 12? I think I need to have a, a lower number. So divine says nine or lower, two or lower, seven or lower. Oh, this seven right here works really well. Oh, but it's not in the right, do you see that? The seven doesn't allow me to use that D10. I can only have the D10 here and then in this section but it is nine or lower using one of these numbers. So I am going to select that. I'm gonna say I wanna circle the D10 seven result. I am picking that and I'm going to check it off right here. I'm gonna say I have a nine or lower. I got a seven, that works. So I'm gonna check that off right there and it's because the D10 is applicable in an elemental and I also have the right thing. Now I haven't finished my divine research. I still have to get the two and the seven, but I'm also doing something here. So notice that was in this elemental column. There's also a public or mastery goal that players are trying to achieve. If you mark six circles in the elemental energy column, you get eight bonus coins. Whoever has the most coins at the end of the game wins. You are the best merchant. And if you do this, it flips over and becomes the apprentice card for the same um, uh, requirement. You only get half coins. So I am racing to get this elemental and I've got one of the six needed. Plus I'm working towards my cleric, which really wants divine things and possibly this beautiful divine sword of the dwarves. Keyword divine, sword as a weapon, and of the dwarves, another enchantment keyword. So that was one of my dice. I get to pick another one. Now, what do I want? I have a sword, a backpack, and a shield. So a shield goes here. Um, ooh, interesting. Let's see here. I might just want to do this backpack. Now, I'll tell you why. So this backpack needs a three or higher and it's in the leather section. I wanna make this backpack for my cleric uh, and it's three or higher and the result here is a six. So if I check this one off because it is in the six, I can do it with the D6 and I matched it. So I circle this because I used it. Now I have completed the backpack. There are no more materials needed. I have done all of the work. And so I will circle the one. This is one victory point or one coin at the end of the game. And anytime you finish a row, which is one item or enchantment, you receive a potion from the supply and it goes into your supply. And potions are used in two different ways. Um, the first way is to add one or lower one by a number of a pip on a die of your choice. 
And after you use this extra die space, you have three times you can use an extra die before you have to start paying for extra dice. So theoretically, six times in the game, I can take more than two results. But right now, I'm looking at those two results and I'm thinking that might be good. The other thing is that one on a D8 is actually really good for, boy, look at this, elite armor. Maybe I'll just take my extra die right now. Having a low result on these higher dice is really good, and having a high result on these smaller dice, the D6s and D8s, um, generally can be really good for this section. So let's just give myself this. This is all, simultaneously, we're all playing. I can check this off, get my die, do this. Um, I can just say, I wanna take my extra die right now. I'm gonna take that eight, the result of the one, and I can look down this column and I need a one or lower on an eight, 10, or 12. So I'm gonna say check it off. And what that says is if I finish it by getting the three or lower on only the D12, I can have elite armor, which is worth three points in and of itself, but it also says two points per armor card. And I know I'm gonna be making uh, a shield here in a little bit. So it's me thinking about trying to complete as many armor cards as possible. Uh, armor items so that I can get that really cool charm. So that's cool. That's it. That was going to be my turn. Now I'm looking over here. Lewis has the same options, but he's got pretty different goals. He wants to get a grimoire, a crossbow, and bracers, and he also wants of the dwarves. So let's look at of the dwarves. He has uh, the chance to use that's not necessarily good, the d12, which is a 12 result. Again, that's just a really kind of yucky roll there for the beginning. But he wants an 8 or lower on this die, this die, or this die. So I think he's going to pick that 7, and he's going to cross through 8 or lower. He takes the 7. He's working on his of the dwarves. Now, does he get anything else? He can do the 10. No, he can't do anything else. He needs a 4 or lower on one of these two dice. So let's have him go for something else. These are the cards that are available to him right now. If he can fulfill their orders by completing the items, he can get points on general orders. So let's have him work towards something. He wants the Helmet of the Dwarves. That's actually really good. So if he finishes that this next turn, maybe he can do it. So let's look for Helmet. Helmet, Helmet. He needs a 5 or higher on the D6. Well, look at that. That D6 is right here. He's going to circle the 6. 5 or higher. Check it off. Is that the only thing needed to complete that item? Yes. He finishes. He gets that. Circles it for 2 points at the end of the game and he grabs one of these guys. I'm gonna put his potions on his, I'll put it on his picture, because right now, I'll put mine on mine too. He's got the supply right beneath him and it looks like he has all the potions, but he doesn't, he has, he has just this one. And the colors don't matter in the base game. Uh, they will matter in the expansion, Dangerous Business, but right now, grabbing any potion is perfectly fine. I don't know if he wants to use that extra die. Let's have him wait on that because you only get three free ones and then after that you have to start paying those potions. So let's just say that's it. We are all essentially done with crafting and researching. We're all doing this at the same time. So no one's waiting for anybody to make choices that affect their choices. So now we're gonna move on to the mastery phase. The mastery phase is checking to see did anybody accomplish the mastery? Well, nobody did. It's the beginning of the game. You need many circles to do this. And here's our second mastery. These were just randomly selected at the beginning. And it says, Woodsman. Mark five circles in the wood material column. And if you do, you'll gain eight coin. Now, there always is going to be a mastery in crafting and a mastery in research. It just depends on the uh, combination of cards that you select at the beginning of the game. And just like before, when someone gets it, it goes to the apprentice side. So you definitely want to work on that mastery before everybody else at the table does it. And if you do it the same turn as someone else, you both receive the mastery score and then flip it over for the next round. So that's gonna be the mastery. And then lastly, we do the customer phase. Customers are gonna leave your shop if you are not servicing them, if you are not giving them what they want. So what you do is every player is going to take their leftmost card and slide it over to the player to their left. And everything's going to shift down. And that one's gonna shift over. These will shift down and I will put this one over here. So I lost uh, my customer who wanted the Spear of the Orcs because I was not giving them 
um, their spear. I was not helping them <laughs> get that. Um, and now he lost that customer for shocking scroll. And that's going to come to me. So hopefully uh, this round we're going to be able to fulfill an order of some kind um, that gives us some progress. So that is it. We are going to move on to round two. Super easy. We're going to pick up these dice and we're going to roll them. Oh, super. Oh, dang it. That that D12, if it doesn't roll low, oof, oof, oof. Okay, so we got three, then we have one, then we have two, and then we have 11. So let's get his results down here too. And there we go. So simultaneously decide what we want to do. I really want that divine, but good grief. I need a seven or lower on that D12 and it rolled 11. Now I could make it an 11 if I paid four potions, knocking it down by one for every potion I discard. I only have one potion though. So I'm probably not gonna get that divine keyword, but you know what I am gonna get? I'm gonna take that two results on the D10 and say, boom, arcane with a D10 result, two or lower, yes please. So now I'm only waiting on that D12, seven or lower, which is likely to roll because D12, I mean, it's if I can even get it to like, uh, six is halfway, that'd be really, six and seven is right there. Oh, I really need that. But that's a fantastic move to progress towards getting my divine. Now, what else am I gonna do? Elite, pff, not getting that. I need to get that really low D12. But I am working on, do I have fiery plate armor? Gosh, that seems like really, really hard to get. Um, plate armor, oh, it's really hard to get. Plate armor is really, I mean, you get five coins for that. It is like massively awesome, but you have to have some really fantastic results on those um, D6s and, and D8s. So not gonna work on that one. Shield of the Orcs. Of the Orcs, looks like it needs some of that wild magic, which, phew, not really doing that right now. Shocking scroll, let's look at shocking scroll. Shocking are these two results and I already used my, oh, but could I use this one? Yes, oh, let's do, I'm gonna look long-term and say, if I work towards getting a shocking scroll, <laughs> then I can maybe buy this before that customer leaves my store. They're gonna kind of wander around looking at other items and wait for me and see if I'm gonna get what they want and then um, I can maybe fill it. So I think that shocking scroll looks really, really good. Scrolls are pretty easy to make as well. And I was working on, I did my backpack. Yep, I'm gonna do that, let's do that. So I'm gonna take that one on the D8 and I want to do shocking two or lower on the D8, yes please, and you better believe it. Look at that, one, two, three in elemental. I am halfway, I am halfway in just round two to getting to this. And I think he's not catching up with me. I'm not sure he's really wanting to do uh, as much elemental, but that's really what I'm pushing for. And I'm also hopefully gonna get that mastery. So I think I'm gonna just wait. I, ah, gosh, I could take that extra one and get my scroll. Maybe I should do it so that I can really lock in. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> I'll take the three result here, boy, I'm just, I'm blazing through my extra dice. But I take a three on a D6 and I look down here and I can get that scroll, but I also get to circle it and grab another potion. So that's another reason why you might want to do these checks is to finish those rows to get the potion because the potion gives you the flexibility um, of the dice and the dice results. So over here, he was working on Grimoire, Crossbow, and Bracers. Bracers needs a nine or higher on this one, this one, or this one. Not happening. That's that's not happening. Uh, okay, so then let's look at, we have Crossbow, nine or higher, six or higher. Not happening. This turn, at least, those results are not really that good. The Grimoire seems maybe more doable, but he still just doesn't have those high results on those basic three dice. So perhaps he should move over here and take a look at of the dwarves. He needs four or lower on the this one. There we go. So he's gonna take the two results on the D10, check it off because he can do arcane magic. And now he gets of the dwarves he gets a potion because he finished a column, and now he has essentially 
all this progress towards his uh, warrior. So let me show you that card again because he is getting all of the dwarf keywords. He has just checked it off and that means now he needs the Grimoire cross crossbow and bracers and he can start getting those bonuses for his sponsored adventurer. Super, super good. I'm still working on my divine keyword, um, which again is just really, really tough. So he got that one of the dwarves. He'd use the two. What else does he want to use? Is there anything that is okay for that 11? I mean, 11 gets him fiery keyword, and it looks like we have a fiery greaves and a fiery plate armor. That's, he's hearing, he's hearing the hustle bustle in the store and they're like, I need fiery, I need fiery. I need to be ready to do that. So I think he wants to do it. I think he's gonna check that off because it's a really good use of that 11 and a really, really high roll on those D12s. Checking it off for fiery. Does he wanna use the one on the D8? Does he wanna do that? He can get, start working towards shocking I'm, or the shocking scroll is what I'm working towards, but I don't know if he sees that. It's going to be a long time for that to get down here. Can he do anything else? Helmet of the Dwarves. Helmet of the Dwarves. <gasps> Ooh, I'm so excited. He's going to be able to fulfill an order. Okay, let's have him stop. Let's have him stop. So as part of this order phase, as you work in your crafting and your researching, is figuring out, did you... Um, complete any orders personally for your uh, sponsored adventurer, which we double checked and no and no for either of us. But then the next thing is figuring out, do you have any of these keywords for the general orders? So I was working towards my shocking scroll, didn't get it. Divine sword of the dwarves. I don't have the dwarves. I don't have of the orcs. Fiery plate armor. Plate armor is almost impossible to get at this point, especially with these super low dice. Spear of the Orcs, no. Everlasting Grimoire, you can always see your keywords and if you've checked things off. Fiery Greaves of the Orcs, uh-oh. Helmet of the Dwarves, he does. He gets this card. So Helmet of the Dwarves, what he does is he's going to score these three points or these three coins at the end of the game. He made a sale. He puts this face down in his player area and he will take one card from the top of the deck and replace it face down. Nobody knows what this order is. Nobody can just automatically gobble up an order right as the customer comes in. This will reveal when we move the cards and it's the customer phase. So that was super, super exciting. So that's gonna be essentially the end of that crafting and research phase. We check for mastery. Do I have six elemental circles? No. Does he? No. Five wood circles, he's got none, I've got one. So I don't think that um, he's necessarily caring about becoming an enchanter or a woodsman at this point. Um, he's already helping other customers and he's making such good progress on his sponsored adventurer. So we move past that phase and now we're into that customer phase. We're gonna move one to the left. We're gonna scrunch these down. This one's gonna pop over the line into uh, Lewis's uh, customer space these come down and that stays right here. But now we are going to flip it over and find out what is it? Yeah, so exciting. So I now have this uh, Divine Warhammer. Let's take a look at this guy. So good, look at that. Fantastic, oh, Divine! Oh, Divine is my keyword. Oh, if I can get Divine and then I can do the Warhammer. Oh, good grief, that Warhammer is really expensive. Look at that, it's got three circles needed. It needs steel, wood, and leather. Ay ay ay. Okay, so something to plan for though, right? I mean, like that's the whole point of seeing those customers. You can see them before they head out. And in the two-player game, you have four. And in bigger player games, it goes down to three in front of you. And in really big games, it's only two in front of you. And so you have customers who visit your shop for a much, much shorter time. So now we're just going to get into round three. So grab the dice, here we go. Let's hope for a low number on this D12, please. I mean, both of us really need it. I need it a lot. I need it so much. Five, five is good. Five is much better than 11. So low is one for the D6. I've got eight. Oh, that's very different from the two ones we had before. I got seven in that D10, and then I've got the five. Wow. 
Wow, wow. So one, eight, seven, and five. This is good. So let's look at it. I'm, you know, you know I'm doing the divine and I need the 12 and I just have to take it. It's seven or lower? Yes. Check it off. Circle that I use the five. Circle that I get those three points at the end of the game and I'm going to receive a potion. I now have divine. I also have the backpack. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am just gonna say in the middle of my turn because this is the crafting and research phase. You do all of this whenever it makes the most sense to you. I say my first order is completed because I have the divine backpack. It doesn't have to be because it's the first one listed, but if you complete any of those items, you say, hey person, hello cleric. <laughs> Please come by and pick up your divine backpack. I have it ready to go. I check this off because I completed my first order and I nab three potions, three potions. Here I go. I just grabbed three more. Yes. That's going to help so much when I start needing to pay potions to take those extra dice that I want the results within one round. Um, and it's going to help me do that flexibility of the plus one or minus one as many potions as I discard. So that's fantastic. I need a short, a sword and a shield. I need, <laughs> I need, I need this sword and I need shield. So do I have a four or higher on my D6? No. Well, what a stinker. Man, that stinks. Well, I'm not getting it this round, which gosh, that would be really, really cool to get. Um, gosh, that'd be really cool. So how can I use this eight? I need to use an eight to maybe get something really good. Eight or lower on the dwarves would be good. And then a four or lower ugh, on the D10. That's not really all that good. I need a shocking scroll. So I've got scroll where shocking. I need a seven or lower. That's it. That's it. I got to get the shocking. I got to get the customer while they're in my store. So I'm going to do the D10 result at seven or lower. I'm circling that and I circle shocking because I'll receive those points. And because I finished an item, I take a potion. So I've got this guy. I'm going to pop him up just a little bit so I remember. Do I have a shield? Do I have a shield? No. Of the orcs, divine sword of the dwarves. But I do want a sword for him and I want a sword for this. I can maybe get that before they leave. So maybe I should take my bonus of four or higher. No. Ah, oh, I need that so bad. I can't, I can't have it. I can't have it. Um... So I did this, I need, maybe I should do that eight. Eight or higher to get braces. Oh, let's do this, let's do this. I think this is going to be, gosh, it's only worth one point and nobody needs bracers. Now here's where I could do something. Nine or higher on six, eight, or 10, I could choose to use the eight and then discard a potion to make it nine. I don't change the die. Obviously you can't change a die if it doesn't even go there. Um, but that would be a really great opportunity to do that. So maybe I should just do it on my shield. I'm going to use my last free die. I'm going to circle that. And I'm going to come here and look at my shield. Eight or higher on a six or an eight. I check it off because I need a shield eventually. And um, might as well just work towards it. I keep taking so many dice. Um, I just am greedy, I guess. But let's see if I can work something out for Lewis over here. He wants bracers, nine or higher. He wants to do it. He wants to do what I just said because he actually needs bracers for his warrior. Yes. So he is going to take the eight result, circle it, check it off, pay a potion. He says, I got that. And now I circle bracers and get a potion back. So now he's got the potion and he says, I've got bracers of the dwarves for my warrior, even though it's the third line down, it's the third item, it's just an order. He checks this off and says, I have your order warrior and now you get three potions. And he hasn't even picked his second die yet. So he needs to get the crossbow and he needs to get the grimoire. So that's a lot, that's a lot. He wants to get the grimoire here for the everlasting as well. Spear of the orcs fiery plate armor. Let's see here. The divine sword is flying towards him, but I don't know if it's fast enough. 
So let's see what he does with his second die. He can do a one on the six, which is not good. It's not a good result. Look, they all want to be higher on that d6. So I think that's a really bad die to pick. Um, so we're not going to pick that guy. Maybe we want the seven on the d10. And it says spear. He just wants the spear of the orcs. Maybe he wants to go for Spear of the Orcs. It says seven or higher, and he's got the seven. We're gonna have him pick the seven, check it off, circle that spear, and then grab a potion. Now, does he wanna take an extra die? I've been having me take extra dice. The five is not that bad. It's really good on the D12. So what over here is good for the five? Oh, let's give him the Orcs because I just said he wants to go for the shield of the orcs or he wants to go for the fire greaves of the orcs or the spear of the orcs. He's gonna take an extra die. It's the five, making it four by putting back a potion, checking this off because it's that 12. That's really good. That was his extra die for free. Fantastic. I think he likes it. And I think we are ready to check to see um, if we've got, I've got this. So on my turn, I say I've got my shocking scroll. And where's my scroll? Scroll, shocking. I put it in my player area and I'm going to replace this. All right, this is all part of that crafting research phase. He didn't get the, of the orcs. He doesn't have that one yet and he doesn't have the plate armor. So I think he didn't get those, but he did get this guy. So again, good progress with the sponsored and the general. Um, we're gonna move on to the mastery phase in the wood. So I've, I've got Joe, oh, I've got two in the in wood now in this one. Nope, he still has just none. And then the enchanter for the elemental, I still got just three. So no mastery just yet, customer phase. We're gonna shift everything down. Shield's gonna pop over there. This is gonna flip over. Oh, fiery grimoire, that looks really good. So these are Louis. Louis is good. Louis goods. And these are mine. Okay, fantastic. Okay, we're now ready for round four. I think I am going to. I think I'm gonna be able to get some really cool stuff this turn. So let's roll and uh, hope we get some really cool dice results. Here we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We'll see here. Three, and then I've got seven, then I've got four and six. So three, seven, four and six. So I need to get, I've got, I need a sword and I need a shield. I need the three or higher on uh, the D6. I'm taking it, super easy. It was actually exactly what I needed. So I'm gonna take the three or higher, I circle that and I grab my potion. So that's one of my dice. Now my second die, cause I'm gonna to get to do this. So divine shield, I'm just gonna say I take it because the really, really cool thing about this um, is that you have the flexibility to do things when you want to do things. So if I complete my second order, it says mark any circle. So I am going to complete my divine shield. I check it here and it says, mark any circle. I look out here and I can check off anything that I need, anything that I may be struggling to get or that would really, really help me. So if I wanna get this divine war hammer, which means I need the war hammer, or I need to get the grimoire. Do I have fiery? I don't have fiery. That's not gonna be my keyword. Of the dwarves is gonna be kind of hard. I don't even have the sword yet, but I do have divine. I think that's just gonna pass on the way. But this divine warhammer might be interesting, or I can just get progress towards my sword and finish it off. But I think what I'm gonna do is get the hard thing. Now down here, I told you I checked this off way long time ago. This is a three or lower on the 12. And that's really hard to do. And so I'm gonna check it off because it's going to give me three points, just period. It gives me another potion. And I'm going to get two points at the end of the game per armor card. And I'm gonna just start cranking out all the armor. I'm just gonna start like just uh, manufacturing, you know, as much as I can with the bracers, helmet, greaves, and plate armor. 
um, which would give me two points every time I do it plus what it is initially. So that's my free any circle. That's what you get when you complete your second order for your sponsored adventurer. Now I look out here and I say I need to pick one of these. What do I need to do? Um, the Warhammer is, um, I, I can't take that one, but I could take um, the seven to get the five. And then maybe in a little bit, I can get this. I think I wanna do that. So five or higher on a, a D6 or the D8. This says four or higher. That's actually a lot easier to get. So I'm gonna do this um, five or higher on the seven. Now I'm not gonna take any more dice at this point. I could because I've got so many here, but I think I, I wanna save it because I might need to use all of these to modify a really, really hard die roll to go down something or to go up something. Oh, boy, I wish I could make some more progress. Oh, I have three wood out of five. That's really good. Well, I'm really happy about that. I'm really happy about that. Okay, he is over here trying to get the grimoire and the crossbow nine or higher on this. Let's have him, let's have him check off that nine or higher using the D8 and pay two potions because it's seven and now he can make it a nine. That's really hard to get. Um, you can't even get that naturally. You're gonna have to use potions to get it. And now he can get the six or higher on uh, one of the other, these basic three dice a lot easier. I don't think I want him to push it and pay right now because I think he can actually roll a six or higher on the D10 normally. Um, let's see what else he can do. He wants to get a seven or lower on any of the others. So I'm gonna have him do the D12. Six is lower than seven and he gets the of the dwarfs enchantment plus a potion back. That's really of the dwarfs, of the orcs. I hope I said of the orcs. So he's got spear of the orcs. He doesn't have, oh, he does have the spear. He's gonna get that one. Shield of the orcs. Oh, dang it, he didn't get the shield, but he has time. He has time to get it. Yes, okay. Ah, so exciting. So he's gonna say, I get the spear of the orcs. Look at this. He has the spear keyword and he also has the of the orcs that he worked for. He's gonna put that order there, pop that guy in there and uh, yeah, very exciting. So I did my second order and then the divine warhammer working towards and then I don't have any of these other ones. So that's gonna be the end of that crafting research phase. I told you I am really close to getting the wood. I need two more and I only need three more for the elemental. Uh, and so we're gonna move those customers, we're gonna shift them down, popping that one over there, moving this over here, and we are going to reveal the new customer that showed up at Lewis's place. Spear of the Dwarves, oh my gosh, he's gonna be able to fulfill it, no problem. Do you see this? That is so exciting. So the person who left the shop, uh, the orc says, hey, that guy made a really good spear over there at Lou's Goods. And then so then this dwarf showed up and wanted that super special spear. And so just spear of the dwarves. I mean, pop that up right there. He has already locked that in for that particular, uh, for this next round coming up, which is round five of 10. So cool, so, so stinking cool. So at the end of the game, here's what you're going to do. You're going to add up all of your crafting circled coins and you're going to put them here in the crafting section. The next thing is the material mastery. And that is going to be, did you get your uh, master woodsman or your apprentice? Did you get the eight or the four? And you're gonna write that in there. And then you're gonna do the same thing with your spell research. You're gonna circle all of those and if you got these bonuses, it's going to be your charm bonus over here. So don't add those bonuses just yet. Just look at that core number. And then you're going to look at your energy mastery. Did you get the eight for the uh, elemental? Did you get the four? And then you're going to look at your completed orders, add up all the coins for your orders. Charm bonuses, two points for armor card. I know I'm gonna get at least two points for that shield. I hope I can complete more. And then your sponsored adventurer, once you complete your third order, you get to mark any circle just like you did for the second one, 
but you also get that six points or whatever it says. Not every sponsored adventure is worth the six coins that these two are worth, but those two are worth six coins. And then you're gonna total everything up. So this is Merchants of Magic, a set of watch tail. And at this point, what I wanna do is just explain the dangerous business expansion and the different modules now that you know how this core game works, how they fit in and what they do in the game. So the first cool thing is that there's a way to reserve orders. So all these orders, the customers are going to move one card to the left over to maybe potentially another uh, shop, but there's a place to reserve and you have these tokens and you'll see that these tokens match the player color based on uh, all eight different colors in the game and you will place this and then take that order and reserve it just for you. Now, if you do not complete the order by the end of the game though, it's going to be worth negative two. So you can't just reserve orders to keep them from other players. You will reserve it because you intend to do it, but it's gonna move away from you and then you won't have the opportunity to complete it because you can only complete orders that are in front of you at that particular round. So this allows you to kind of have a little bit more flexibility and have intentions to do something, but you just may not be able to get it that particular round so you can reserve. And I think that's a really, really cool feature. Another one is the collector module. And these are just simply more cards that have different combinations. So you have things like sh uh, shield and spear of the elves, and you have two different things they are collecting. Um, this one's the divine grimoire and spear. You'll see that they look very similar to the cards that we've been playing with. Sword and plate armor of the orcs. So it's again, just two things. Now you've got backpack and plate armor of the dwarves. I just think it, the, 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 the design on these are perfect. They look just like the base game, and they also are going to be offering a different amount of uh, coins or victory points as well. Shocking backpack and plate armor. It just fits so, so well. Here's the scroll and the bracers of the elves. So really, really cool stuff that they're going to add. And you just simply shuffle these into uh, the cards. So now you've got even more cards, and they have two things that they want uh, of a particular uh, focus or specialty or enchantment. So that's another thing, that collector's module. So the next two modules that you can add um, in any combination with the others is the advertising module and the potion recipes module. And you're actually going to be using this new market board. And so you've got this uh, that you're gonna be playing with and players are going to be receiving these cards, again, based on their color. There are four different cards. Um, you've got this brew card, and in the marketing, it's going to ask players to pick one of their cards and play it after the dice are rolled, uh, but before you move into the crafting and research phase. And so it's going to allow you to kind of modify and have some flexibility when it comes to what you're actually uh, building, what you're reserving, and what you're, what you're doing. So those are the four different cards that every player is going to receive, and it's going to uh, use this particular um, uh, market board. And then the potions recipe has a bag, and you're going to now put the potions in this bag, and the colors are going to matter at this point, because when you go to draw a potion, when you finish a column, you're gonna reach in the bag and draw the potions out randomly. So the green, red, and the purple now mean something because you've got these different um, potions that you are trying to build based on the color. So it'll give you something cool like this everlasting elixir if you have two reds. If you've got a green and a purple, it's going to give you a concoction of the orcs, uh, draft of the dwarves uh, with your purple and your red. They are just the coolest looking things. And so it's gonna really um, help you, again, modify, maximize your turn, do just really, really cool stuff. This is Brew of the Dragons and it requires one of each. Um, so spend any dive, any value to mark any circle. Just so, so much uh, flexibility here. Divine Tonic. So these potions now are going to be part of the game if you want to use that potion recipes because now the potions with the colors are drawn from the bag instead of just randomly drawn and used to do those initial two things which is to add more dice if you want to pay the two three four to get one more die value uh, in that turn in that round um, or to go up and down pips for the plus one plus two plus three depending on how many potions you actually uh, use or discard 
And then we've got the last thing, it's the creatures module. And the creatures module um, asks players to have these boards. And instead of getting your sponsored adventurer, you get this. And this is going to be essentially your earth go golem. Um, you have accessories, weapons, war hammers, or well, not war hammers, part of the weapons, and then armor. And you have this combat skill that you're going to be adjusting during the game as you complete. And you get the weapon shield here as your defense. And you are essentially fighting these creatures or these monsters. Um, like this fire serpent is a level one creature um, that needs 10 uh, strength to, uh, to defeat it. And they have these level one creatures. And they've got these level two creatures that are a little bit tougher. Um, and you'll see down here it says level two. And then you've got your level three creatures. There's our level three creature, living mirror, oh, 24. And then the last one is the uh, unhallowed, which is just, I mean, look at this, a hulking amalgam. It's just like massive. You get really good points, <laughs> um, but it's like crazy, crazy tough to fight. So you've got these um, modules that are going to allow you to really expand the game and to add what you want. It, you can add any of the modules that you want in any combination, um, but it really just expands the game and cracks open just more opportunity, um, more uh, flexibility, and uh, just maybe a little bit more versatility too in the game. So that's what Dangerous Business offers this game. If you want to hear my final thoughts on Merchants of Magic, a set of watch tale, you can click that eye in the top right corner or hit the link in the show notes below in five, four, three, two, one.